I'm here with Angela Yee, and I want to talk about your start in radio. You didn't always want to be in radio. Yeah, it was never my goal to do radio. I really was a marketing person. I really like in my head that I'd be doing something at a flashy advertising agency yes. with a huge budget, <laughs> taking people out to dinner and mm -hmm. going to conventions and wearing nice suits and mm -hmm. things like that. But um, I ended up getting the opportunity to do radio and I didn't want to turn that down. I think sometimes you get an opportunity that you're like, wow, this doesn't happen often. I have to take it. How did you get the opportunity to, to work in radio or your start in radio? Uh, Paul Rosenberg and my friend Tracy at Shady Records. I had um, I reached out to Tracy because I saw they were doing a um, they were hiring at Sirius for mm -hmm. the station Shade 45 that Eminem started. And so she was like, oh, yeah, call Paul. He deals with them all the time. So I called Paul and I'm like, hey, they're hiring at the station. And I wanted to see if you could just get me an interview was serious just to do marketing. It was a marketing position. He was like, well, you know, have you thought about ever doing radio? And I was like, no, but I would. And so I got my foot in the door that way. I got an audition, thanks to Paul. And then I worked there like auditioning, probationary period for like three months and then okay. they hired me. And so you started off on it. Like, did you test first? Or you, you? It was a test for months. Okay. It was like, they just, I remember the first day I came in, they were like, all right, we'll come in tomorrow. We'll see how you do. And I'd never done it. There was no direction. No one gave me any notes. I didn't know what I was doing. I just showed up. I remember they said the show started at eight. Um, and so I got there at seven. Right. No one was there. <laughs> I was like standing in the uh, hallway with the doors locked, like somebody come, please let me in. And no, they showed up literally at eight. Who was on air with you at the time? Um, it was Cypher Sound Show. Okay. And so he didn't really, he knew me, but he didn't know me that well. Right. And so he was like, what's this girl doing here? Because it wasn't like he brought me in. Right. And I remember when I first started, I didn't tell anybody that I was doing it because I didn't want anybody to know in right. case I didn't get the job. Yeah. I didn't want anyone to listen until I got a little better. Yeah. And so I was just really secretive. And every now and then somebody would be like, I think I hear you on, on the radio. Is that you? And I would lie and say, no, it's not me. <laughs> That's so funny. How long did you kind of audition or with the trial period? It was like three months. Were you getting paid during this audition period? No, I was you, getting unemployment. Because oh, I was going to say, how did you sustain yourself? How long were you there? And then and then you went to, you had your own show. You had like lip service. Yeah, you had like a lip service. I ended up getting lip service while I was on the morning show with Cypher. So okay. I think that in general in life, I'm pretty good at picking things up. Yeah. And so I can start to do something and be terrible at it. And then I'm really like a fast learner. Okay. And so when I first started, I was just really like all in. I wasn't going out. I wasn't doing anything else but trying to make sure that I was ready for my show every single day. And so I did so well. I had a segment on the show every Wednesday. Uh -huh. And it was like all girls talking. It was just us. And it was fun. And it did so well. They were like, we want to give you your own nighttime show. Okay. And that's how I got lip service. Was that a nightly or a weekly? Kinda? It was weekly. It was weekly. Yes. Okay. So you were doing the morning show and then you mm -hmm. had this weekly, this night, nightly, weekly show. Yeah. It was from eight to 10 and then Green Lantern came on after me. Okay. Who was on around, who was on radio around the time that you were um, on series? I'm trying to think of the era at that time. Um, I remember Cypher really wanted to be on Hot 97. Okay. And he did end up leaving to go to Hot 97. Yeah. Big Boy was still on in L.A. Okay, okay. yeah. He's been um, on forever. Yeah, yeah. he's been. He's a legend. And, and it was a lot of people that, um, that uh, Envy was on, and I met Envy because he also worked at Sirius. Okay, so uh, Envy was at Sirius at the time, okay. he was, But he was also at Sirius. It was a lot of DJs that were at Sirius, but also doing Other. FM radio. Gotcha, okay. So was it from there that you ended up on The Breakfast Club? Yeah, it okay. was from there. Okay, so tell, tell us how you ended up on The Breakfast Club. I don't know how radio works. I mean, you and I are friends, so I hear more. But is it, do you, like, does someone call you? You test, you audition, or do they say, well, how does it, how does that you work? You know, Sirius is really different than FM radio. So I feel like I was never in the system back then. I didn't mm. know program directors. I didn't know, like, a lot of other people like that. And yeah. so the way that it started working was the first person that reached out to me, um, was because uh, Boogie D, he actually sent me a message on Facebook. Okay. And he was like, hey, we think you're really great. We would love to have you um, on the radio in Philly. Okay. But actually, before that, Hot 97 offered me the job when Cypher left okay. to come with him, and I turned that down. Okay. So when Cypher left, 
they asked you to come to Hot 97. Yeah, with him. With him, okay. And Cypher really wanted me to come with him, but I did turn it down. Why did you turn it down? It just wasn't enough money. And because I had the opportunity to have my own show if I stayed. Gotcha, okay. And so it was less money if I would have went. Okay. And I also would have been, you know, it would have been Cypher Sounds and Peter Rosenberg. Gotcha. And I okay. wouldn't have been part of that. Right. When I could have had like the Angela Yee show. You're right, you're right. <laughs> so I was like, I'll stay here and have my own show and make more money. Okay. And have my freedom. And so I stayed at Sirius, even though High 97 was like the biggest deal in the world. Mm -hmm. For me, I just felt like it would be kind of a backwards step for me. Yeah. You are a money girl. <laughs> I, I'm a negotiator. You you're know? also a money girl. Because, And you know what else I said to myself? I can take this opportunity back and get more money at the place where I am because they wouldn't have known what to do if I left. And my show was doing really well. And so I went back and I did negotiate a higher salary because... Even though they didn't know it was less money that I was being offered, I made it seem like it was more. So that's a uh, that's a negotiating tool yeah. trick. Yeah, it, it could have backfired. They could have said bye, and I could have been making less money. <laughs> but you would have had another opportunity too, though. Yeah, and I think it's also how you go in because I told them I wanted to stay. Yes, I said, look, I really like it here. I want to stay here, but I have been offered more money for another opportunity. And they did say, well, what will it take for you to stay? Like, what is that? And it wasn't, I didn't ask, it wasn't an outrageous amount of money. Mm -hmm. And so, and I did deserve it too. Did you ask for anything else besides more money? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Told you you're a money girl. Okay. Um, moving on. So let's talk about how you ended up on the Breakfast Club. You got a Facebook message mm -hmm. from... Oh, so uh, Buggy D. So he wanted me to come to Philly to do the radio station there. Okay. And, um, you know, at the time... It was another money issue. Okay. Because I was like, all right, if I'm going to move to Philly and mm -hmm. do morning radio, I need to make more money. Yeah. And it really definitely was. And honestly, I'm glad I did that because they came back around and offered me double what they offered me the first time. Philly did or? Philly. After I turned it down. And then Atlanta approached me. Okay. Um, shout out to Frank Ski because he was the person that really wanted me to come there. And then there... Um, their manager, their program director, Reggie, reached out to me, Reggie Rouse. Mm -hmm. And that didn't end up happening. But he was trying to talk to me about doing a different slot other than morning. Okay. And so... Reggie was? Yeah. Okay. And then New York came last. Okay. And so I remember I was at a meeting with the um, with Jay Stevens from Radio 1. And they were like... It was really nice. It was a great... It's a great feeling to have those type of problems where everybody mm -hmm. wants you. Like, mm -hmm. it was a... Honestly, it was amazing. It was hard decisions that I had to make, but it was a good position. Those are good, hard decisions. Right. And so I was leaving from meeting with them. They were like, we want you right now. Like, we will hire you on the spot. Radio 1? Yeah. Okay. They were like, can we please get you? And I was like, well, let me think about it. Because I also am not a fan of making decisions on the spot where there's contracts involved. Okay. You know, you yeah. have to have a lawyer read it. You have to negotiate whatever somebody gives you. You never just take it. Yeah. And so I'm walking back to the car. And, and, and what I learned from this is everybody in radio talks to each other. Okay. Because it's not a coincidence that I'm walking back to my car and then somebody calls me from 105.1. Mm. Somebody told somebody who told somebody who was like, you know, call her now. And so I'm walking back to the car and they're like, listen... We have an opportunity for you here mm -hmm. and it might take a little while, but are you interested? And I was like, absolutely. And I had to turn down the job in Philly in order to um, wait and hope that the job in New York would work out. So you turned down jobs in anticipation of another job that hadn't really panned out yet. Right. Okay. Because that's how radio is too. Like they might tell you you're going to get something. Even with my new show, I knew about it for so long before I could talk about it. And so... Um, and you're negotiating for a long time. It could fall through. Yeah. And so anything could happen. I mean, think about it. A pandemic happened. Right. And we have been talking about me doing something before the pandemic. Okay. And so there's people that had contracts on the table to be negotiated that happened and then it just didn't go through. Okay. And so it is a really tricky business and it is risky to say, I'm going to hold out and wait for this. But I ran into Wendy Williams. <laughs> And Kevin Hunter, it was a party. Okay. It was something like for TI. Okay. And they were at the was party. It in New York? Yeah, it was uh -huh. in New York. And I didn't really know them. Like I had interviewed Wendy on my show a couple of times, but nothing major. And so she stopped me and she was like, hey, hold out for the job in New York. Don't go to Philly. And I was like, because like I said, everybody talks. And so I guess she had heard about it. Somebody must have said something to her. 
And I was like, that is crazy. She was like, trust me. She was like, do not do that. Just hold out for that job. And I did. Wow. So Wendy Williams gave you some good advice. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where it came from or what, you know, because she didn't really know me like that. Yeah. But at that moment, it felt genuine. But um, and I already had kind of thought that because New York is the number one market. Right. And so when you talk about that and then it would be nice not to have to move. It'd be nice to do radio in a place where you grew up and know right. people and you're familiar because I think one of the things, and they had told me that I could take car service back and forth from Brooklyn to Philly every day and they would set it up. Oh, wow. And I, but I said, I wouldn't want to do that because I feel like if you're going to be representing an area, yeah. you should live there. Yeah. And so I really had actually started looking at places when we were having conversations, like where would I live? I would want to live in the middle of everything so that I could get acclimated. Right. Because I don't think that it would be good for me to be a local person in the market and not know anything and be coming from Brooklyn every day. Right. I think I'm with you. And I don't think I would want to travel to Philly either. Yeah. I mean, it's a long commute every day. Can yeah. you imagine? I'd yeah. be knocked out. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, yeah, you would. 